Hey guys, uh, welcome back to my channel. I have another uh, ECM repair video. Uh, this is from 04, uh, 2004 F-150 uh, Lightning. And this is uh, from Edgar in Texas. This is your computer. He sent it because the problem they have, it was kind of like almost like a little close to what the video that I have on, on the repairs uh, on the F-150. You can check that on my channel. I'll probably put a link on the description of this one so you guys can see what I'm talking about. But so he saw me working on that one. He's like, oh, you think you can uh, check and repair the computer? I'm like, sure. Let me, you know, send the computer to me and let me check it out and see what I found. So I want to share a little bit of uh, the testing that I've done on this one and also how I got to here as well. So first of all, uh, as usual, I get, you know, harnesses, uh, the main pins that I need. Let me get you now by hand so I can show you just briefly what I usually do. So that's the way uh, the computer connector looks. It's a 108 pin computer connector and that's the pin out, at least on uh, the first page. Uh, that's just the OBD port. I like to check the over the poor connections. Um, this is the next one. And that's uh, the other uh, page for all the connector pinouts. I'm gonna leave it in the image or in the script for a little bit. So if you need it, it's right here. All right, so that's my homework. I get the signals that I need the most. I write it down in a piece of paper. And that's pretty much what I need for communication and powers and grounds, ignition, powers and grounds, and, and that's it. Disregard that terminal 13, that's for programming. We don't need that. And that's pretty much what I need to be able to communicate with this computer. I'm sorry for the weird angle. So I'm using uh, this uh, breakout box, let's call it, because in here I can connect the scanner and I can also connect the um, computer. So I have my power supply set up to 13 and a half volts and 1.7 amps. I don't really need that much, but sometimes when I turn the computer on, it spikes a little high and then it's necessary to uh, have a little more juice. All right, so that is on. And then I can turn the computer on in here. Why you didn't come on? Nope, it wasn't all the way in. All right, as you can see, we have voltage in there. I'm turning the scanner on so you can see that. But so what I'm also using is uh, my signal generator. It's just an arbitrary uh, signal generator. And those are the settings that I'm using. It's just uh, a sine wave or, you know, 1.3 kilohertz. And I'm um, supplying that over to the computer on the CAN, uh, sorry, on the crank uh, sensor signals, which is 20, pin 21 and pin 22. That is a crank sensor signals. I'm going to spin the computer in here. In the meantime, the, the scanner is booting, so we don't waste too much time on other things. Uh, one sec, let me just get into the history so I can connect into that very quickly. I'm just. In this kind of let me get you here because I did connect to that one before. Communication on this four is this on pin seven, sorry, pin 10 and pin two on the DLC. So I can go over to diagnosis, control unit. At first, I thought that he had no communication, and I was, you know, because that was my problem with the. Uh, four that I was experiencing. It was like no start, no start. And it was getting hit up and, 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 and no start. And it lose the communication. Um, I can go over to live data because I know that I got communication. But that wasn't my case. So I called him just a few hours ago and he told me that that he found the issue was in the crankshaft uh, position sensor. The connector melted and melted the wires together. And since then, you know, he fixed the connector, but this computer doesn't read RPM. He plugged another computer on the car and the car runs. So, but they want these ones to be repaired. 
because they're hard to get so it's definitely important if possible to repair so let me just look for the crankshaft sorry rpm engine revolutions per minute and that's that's all we need in here so we can see that we have no revolutions per minute even though i'm injecting that signal and i'm going to show you that on the oscilloscope which i'm using for for that sorry but the cable of the oscilloscope drop <laughs> so i'm just going to go down i mark the pins on the computer here that's one of the crankshaft position sensor signals i gotta change the amplitude range on this I want to show this because it's a uh, it's a nice uh, testing. So as you can see, I'm just in pin 21. I'm going over to pin 22, which is you know positive and negative of the of the same sensor. And now, it's, as you can see, it's reading. As the sensor goes inside, it passes through these uh, resistors in here. That's one of the signals in here, and we can see that we got a signal in here. So that's what I do. I'm injecting the signal to see where I get, you know, what, it, what is missing, if that's the case. So then I go over to this order. Um, this is, a, 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 again, this is a, an, an analog signal, you know, it's an AC uh, signal. But when it goes into this resistor, it starts to go into a, almost a square signal. Let me show you. This is the one side of the of the um, sorry of that resistor. If I go over the other side, which is right here, the same resistor, the same signal. Now we have that uh, AC sine wave. So what this resistor is doing is kind of like filtering the signal and make it look square, which is at the end what the computer needs in order to read it. But it's there. So I follow all these pins and. We have this in here and this in here are the same uh, signals, you know, positive and, neg and negative for the crans uh, crankshaft. And it goes over to uh, this IC here, which is at the end, again, the problem. So if I go over to here, just waiting for the scanner to read. Make sure I'm connected to the right pin. Mind the right pin? I thought it was. It's a little hard to do this without the microscope. I got so much stuff in here. Trying to make this video as quick as possible. Yes, right there. Okay. I was just not making it contact. But as you can see, we got the same square wave. And I'm in that pin right there. So, and the pin right next to it, which is this one here is the other signal as you can see now i'm doing good contact with the oscilloscope so the signal is reaching this is an uh, an analog to digital converter and then takes it over to the microprocessor to get that signal so this is how i go and do a reverse engineering to find the problem is either here or on the microprocessor now i have to look on the other side to make sure that this signal is making it through and then it's going to the microprocessor itself, which I am suspecting for what he told me that this might be the issue because uh, this is what it controls the ignition um, coils and it takes that RPM signal and then computer uh, does its work and activates all the injectors and all the coils, uh, sorry, all the coils. All right, guys, so this is just a short video just to show you a little bit of how I do it and how you get communication with a scanner. So again, all I'm using for these ones are power and ground and the pins for communication. I don't, in this case, I'm not going to supply all the signals because I don't really need it. As soon as I can make that signal or RPMs to read 200 RPMs, 100 RPMs. So my goal is to just, you know, change the, the amplitude of the signal, not the amplitude, the, the frequency well, I go here and I start, you know, scrolling down and making, making that signal go slower. And this is how I do it. So 
I just again wanted to show something quick and uh, how you do tests. You don't test uh, for a computer. The the complaint is no current sense or signal. You're not going to check injectors and you're not going to check the whole thing. You're focusing yourself on the problem. And then yes, when you correct the problem, you do the test on the whole thing. <laughs> now it started to roll the signal. As you can see, it's just very slow signal for for this for this oscilloscope. But hopefully this is a little helpful for those guys that are around the world and so and like this content and they're, you know, working on computers and trying to do what I do too. All right. So I will see you next time. And I hope you like the content. It's very short, but I think it's good information and what I'm trying to share with you. All right. See you next time. Have a good night. Bye bye.